<laughs> Welcome to episode number 586 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. I am happy to announce that longtime friend of the show, Nigel Forrester from Concurrent Technologies, is joining me this week. Nigel and I chat about time sensitive networking and how Ethernet will pave the way for innovation in real time communications in the future. Also this week, I check out how you can fly your very own eVTOL starting next month with the world's first commercial eVTOL. No license required, but a whole lot of money and training will be needed. But first, please welcome my friend Nigel to Fish Fry. Hi, Nigel. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me to talk to you again, Amelia. Okay, so first... Give my audience a brief update on what Concurrent Technologies is all about. Thank you. So we have been around 40 years as a company, mainly focusing around Intel processor-based plug-in cards for critical embedded applications and augmented latterly by things like assured position, navigation and timing capability, switches and storage modules. And then really excitingly, since I talked to you last year, We've required a rugged systems company in the US to build rugged systems with our plug-in cards. And it's great to be able to talk to you as one of the fastest growing companies in the industry. So, Nigel, you presented a session at this year's Embedded Tech Trends called SOSA and the Ethernet Pipe Dream. So first, Pipe Dream? Nigel, tell me what you mean by Pipe Dream. Yeah, so you know me, Amelia, I like to be a little bit cryptic. So by <laughs> pipe dream, I really mean the Ethernet pipe or pipes, because the sort of systems that we're building have multiple Ethernet connections. And that's a change from where we were a few years ago, where we had lots of different types of fabric, the serial rapid IO and PCI Express being two of the fabrics that we've used in previous generations of products. And there's really three parts to the pipe dream. There's the defragmentation of the market, there's the future proofing by using Ethernet, and there's the future way that we're making that more capable of real-time communications. And just to decompose that a little bit more, what SOSA has driven as a real change in the industry by forcing vendors like ourselves to use Ethernet in the data plane fabric is that it has made systems that you really can select the best in class and that they will be interoperable between vendors. And that's rising the volumes, it's lowering the price points, creating all the right types of features that our customers have been asking for for many years. And on the future-proof side, you know, we're already delivering and we're showing the sort of speeds that you can get by using 100 gigabit Ethernet pipes. But we're seeing already demand from our customers and information from our key suppliers that lead us to believe that, you know, there's a lot more to come. 200 gig, 400 gigabit Ethernet is, will be capable of very shortly. And by utilizing what is available today, i.e. 100 gigabit Ethernet, even if you're not ready for that today, maybe you only want 10 gig today, it means you can easily upgrade your system or do a technology transition, as we tend to call it, to actually upgrade when you need to. And then the third aspect on the real-time side is that we're seeing a lot of pull from customers already around the use of time-sensitive networking, TSN technology. And the whole reason behind TSN is to enable what is effectively standard Ethernet to be used in a very low latency, high reliability type of environment. So TSN or time-sensitive networking plays an important role here as well, right? So talk to me about the basics of TSN. Yeah, so let's really try and simplify that. So there are really four key attributes, I would say, that are fundamental to time-sensitive networking. So the first part is synchronization. So within a time-sensitive networking-capable Ethernet environment, you have to be able to synchronize your devices at a very accurate level. You know, we're talking about 
a less than a one microsecond type of synchronization. And yeah. that's done through things like precision time protocol. The second attribute is the low latency aspect of TSM. And that's done by things like shaping the traffic and prioritizing the traffic. And again, what you really want is to be able to get a guaranteed maximum latency of, let's say, a 100 microseconds type of environment. Because if you have a, a really critical message, it has to get through in a certain time period to try, prioritize that. And the third aspect is reliability. So some of the applications that people are trying to architect are things like safety critical applications. So you may need replication, duplication to ensure that you can get the required level of reliability. And the fourth aspect is really resource management. And I think the best way of understanding that is thinking about the configuration of your network to enable those time sensitive messages to get to the right place in the right time. So not everything can be classified as top priority. You have to set up a priority mechanism and you have to allocate that to all the elements that you want to be within that network. Let's also address TSN profiles. So how are they grouped and what kind of standards are being developed to support these profiles? So I should say that time-sensitive networking fundamentally is IEEE standardization. It's work in progress. So not all elements of time-sensitive networking are complete today. And from a profile point of view, think of those as like use cases. So mm -hmm. time-sensitive networking initially derived from the audio-visual bridging standard, which was exactly as it said, it's for audio-visual conferencing mm -hmm. and things like that. But there's now industrial automation have a profile, automotive have a profile, aerospace have a different profile. And that's because underneath those profiles, there's a whole lot of what they call effectively components around the reliability and the management and the low latency and the quality of service and synchronization, which you can sort of pick and choose within that profile because some profiles are much more critical than others. So obviously, you're going to have a bigger influence in the reliability for that type of profile. It's a bit like a pick and mix. Pick and choose the best components mm. for the profile that you're using with a view to keeping that, um, to give you the right capability. So Nigel, where do you see Ethernet technology headed in the future? And how do you see it aligning with SOSA? Very good question. I'll just consult my crystal ball <laughs> and give you the best answer. So we've been at an inflection point over the last couple of years where we've been transitioning to Ethernet. And one of the things that we've seen as a vendor is that has significantly shortened our time to development because we're not making so many variants of our cards. That in turn means we can provide them in higher volume at a more competitive price point, which mm. is a really tangible benefit mm -hmm. for our users. We are, as a company and as an organization, very much aligned with the idea that we need to push the technology harder. So there's certain things that we are looking into and searching that are not available in our products today, but will be in the future. And we are on a journey. So time-sensitive networking the end goal is to replace a lot of the legacy interfaces that you'd find in the sort of equipment that our cards and boxes go into. So if you think of ground-based vehicles or aircraft systems, a lot of those today are based on things like CAN bus, if it's a ground vehicle, or 1553 or ARINC 429, if they're an aircraft mm -hmm. or an airframe. And those interfaces are not going to go away for many, many years because they exist in the, the airframe or in the vehicle today. So we have to at least provide a path to keep those interfaces available today. But from a future point of view, they can be replaced. The idea is that time-sensitive networking over a period will start to replace those on new deployments. So we're in a hybrid situation at the moment where there'll be things like 
TSN to legacy interface gateways and legacy interface capabilities on the sort of products that we're doing, as well as TSN capable products to act as, if you like, the, the go forward situation. So, you know, I'm not very good at predicting how quickly these things will occur. <laughs> And I'm quite an optimistic person, so I probably think that it'll happen faster than it actually does. In reality, you know, we are talking at least a decade, I, mm -hmm. I would say, possibly more before TSN is completely ubiquitous. But within that time period, we're going to see a very significant transition. The thing which has struck us as very significant is that we've seen a tremendous pull from some of the really large players in our industry around TSM, where they are absolutely saying this is a mandatory requirement for you to bid on this program going mm. forward, which is quite a revelation to us. We've not seen such a demonstrative behavior for quite a while. And that, that's been very significant, I have to say. Sure. All right, Nigel, it's time for your off the cuff. Now, you're the one of my only speakers who I let make the off the cuff questions themselves. So, Nigel, what do you got to talk to me about today? Well, I know you like English history I in do. England, <laughs> so obviously we've not had the opportunity to entertain you in the UK yet. No, not we'd, yet. <laughs> we'd love to invite you to come and have a cup of tea at Concurra Technologies. Oh, I love that. We, you know, in true English tradition, we're great tea drinkers. In the UK alone, there's something like 100 to 160 million cups of tea drunk a day. Wow. Um, of course, our cup of tea might be quite different from your idea of a cup of tea. We like English breakfast type tea. Mm -hmm. We typically drink it with milk. I think so, like 90% of your tea <laughs> drink in it, drunk in the UK wow. has milk with it, whereas <laughs> some other countries that's not the case. No. It's lemon mm -hmm. or no milk mm -hmm. or whatever. But, you know, we'd really love to, to see you and come and enjoy it. English tea with us. So, uh, I love it. You're welcome at any time. I will join you on that eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nigel, it is always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amelia. Hello, my name is Amelia, and I am obsessed with VTOLs, or vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. I even interviewed David Mayman from Mayman Aerospace about their VTOLs for my 500th podcast episode. So when I saw that I could fly my very own eVTOL starting next month, I thought, sign me up. But I might need to do some kind of crowdsource fundraising because these bad boys are spendy. So let me introduce you to the Pivotal Helix, the world's first commercial eVTOL, which will begin to make deliveries of its scaled production units starting next month in July of 2024. So the Helix has been on sale since October of last year. And actually, four aircraft and two flight simulators were delivered to the United States Air Force Research Laboratory, or AFRL, in February of 2024. So this EV toll is quite special because it's one of only a handful of EV toll designs currently being tested and evaluated by the Air Force Research Laboratory. And the Helix in particular is being evaluated as a platform for remote controlled missions, which could include special forces operations, surveillance, remote supply, and even disaster and emergency response. So right now, the Helix is only a single seater and contains eight rotors with a range of around 20 miles with a 20% reserve and has a cruise speed of 55 knots. But Pivotal has outlined a development roadmap that does include a larger two-seater version with 12 rotors and an autonomous cargo version capable of carrying 450 plus pounds of supplies and or people. So Pivotal says that you can get this bad boy up into the sky in less than 30 minutes. But... 
in order to do that, you're most likely going to need the Helix cart setup that comes with two of the more expensive packages, which are 240000 and 260000 dollars respectively. And before you can even consider liftoff, you're going to need to do some training. All Helix pilots will need to be trained and qualified before they will ship the aircraft to your location, which makes total sense. And enrollment prerequisites will include meeting age, weight, and height requirements. Most trainees can become qualified with two weeks of on-site training at the pivotal Palo Alto headquarters and local training sites. So, two weeks of training and a quarter million bucks and the Helix can be yours. Definitely going to need a crowdsource funding for this expedition. <laughs> So, if you want even more information about Pivotal or Concurrent Technologies, I've included some links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are now on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And, of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of June 14th, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>